All right, in this lesson, we will continue to practice graphing rational functions. We will be identifying the x-intercepts and the vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes, and even checking for symmetry. All right, um, note that I will be doing only the even problems from this particular worksheet. All right, starting with problem number two. Um, the first thing it mentions is the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts, but I actually like to do the asymptotes first, so let's start with that. For the vertical asymptotes, we set the denominator equal to zero and solve. So um, for the vertical asymptotes, I will get by doing x minus 3 equals 0. All right, obviously if I add 3 to both sides, then that's going to give me x equals 3. That's how you get the vertical asymptote. Okay, so x equals 3. And we can go ahead and graph that vertical asymptote. All right, x equals 3 is a vertical line at 3. Okay, so there's our vertical asymptote. Um, now, horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptotes are a bit more complicated because they follow these rules. Okay, these are the rules that I must use to find the horizontal asymptote. It's all about the degree. If the degree of the numerator is less than the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is just y equals zero. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then I use the leading coefficients, like a over c, and that will give me the asymptote. Um, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then there is no horizontal asymptote. So anytime we're talking horizontal asymptotes, you have to look at the degree and decide which one of these three situations we're in. All right, numerator less, numerator equal, or numerator more. So in this case, looking at the degree, okay, um, well, the degree of the numerator is zero, because there are no x's up here, so that means the degree is zero. The degree of the denominator is one, all right, because there's the one x right here. Um, okay, so that means the degree of the numerator is less. And uh, we just saw that if the degree of the numerator is less, then y equals 0 is the asymptote every time. So that tells us that the, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And we can go ahead and graph that. Okay, horizontal asymptote. Now, um, the one asymptote um, is on the x-axis. So um, for this particular problem, that means there will be no, um, there will be no x-intercepts, all right? Normally, we get the x-intercepts by setting the numerator equal to 0. Uh, but the numerator is 1, so there's a clue right there. You can't set 1 equal to 0. And, and we have an asymptote there anyway. So there will be no x-intercepts, none. Okay, the y-intercept. We get the y-intercept by letting uh, x be 0. You know, we plug in 0 for x. All right? So if we plug in 0 for x, if I put a 0 right here, then this just becomes uh, 1 over negative 3. So that's my y-intercept. It's going to be 0 comma negative 1 third. Okay, 0 comma negative 1 third. And uh, we can graph that. 0 is negative one-third, will be about here. Okay, um, so now we need to find more points. Uh, yeah, let's find more points to do this graph. So I'm going to use a couple points to the left of the vertical asymptote and a couple points to the right. So that means I'm going to do, um, let's see, one, two, four, and five, at least. So I'm going to do one, two, four, and five. Okay, for this particular graph, that, these four points will be enough. 
Okay, so 1 over x minus 3. Okay, so 1 over x minus 3. All right? Now, we had said we were going to start at 1. Okay, so at 1, I have negative 1 half. Okay, so I'm just going to use decimals. So that's negative 0.5. Uh, let's see. At 2, I'm at negative 1. Now, I'm going to scroll down and check out 4 and 5. All right, at 4 and 5, I have 1 and 1 half. So 1 and 0.5. All right, this should be enough to do the graph. So let's see. So at 1, I'm at negative 0.5. So here's 1 and here's negative 0.5. At 2, I'm at negative 1. So that'd be like here. All right? That's enough to draw this branch. Something like that. Okay, now the other branch. At 4, we're at 1. So 4 comma 1. And then 5 is 0.5. So here I am, 5 and 0.5 is halfway up. OK, so I will try to draw this branch as best I can. OK, I'm messing up a little bit. Man, this is so hard to do on a computer, you guys. You just don't know how hard this is. Okay, good save. All right, so your graph should look very much like that, my friends. Uh, symmetry, it doesn't have uh, either, it's neither, even nor odd. It would have odd symmetry if this were the origin. But as it is, neither. Okay, so that was problem number two. All right, let's move on to problem number four, since we're just doing the evens. All right, problem number four. Let's start with the asymptotes. The vertical asymptote, we can get that by setting the denominator equal to zero. So one plus x equals zero. Subtract one from both sides, we get x equals negative one. So that's the vertical asymptote. Okay, x equals negative 1. We can even graph the vertical asymptote. All right, right here at negative 1. Okay, there's my vertical asymptote. Um, now, how about the horizontal asymptote? Well, the horizontal asymptote, that's the one where we have to ask ourselves about the degree. All right, um, so let's take a quick look at that. This is the one where we have to ask ourselves, is the degree of the numerator higher, equal, or, wait, I'm sorry, is the degree less than equal to or greater than the denominator, all right? And that helps us decide what the horizontal asymptote is. So, let's see. In this case, the numerator has degree 1, right? Because it's just x. It's linear. The denominator also has degree 1. So this is the situation where the two degrees are equal. So looking back, um, if the degree of the numerator is equal to the denominator, then we use the leading co coefficients, make a fraction out of it, and that'll be the asymptote. Okay, so the leading co coefficients. Be careful. A common mistake would be to look at the 5 and the 1. That's wrong. Those are not the leading coefficients. Okay, the leading coefficient is going to be um, in front of the highest variable, okay? 
So um, the leading coefficients are 2 and 1. Okay, obviously 2 because of this and 1 because of that. Right? In other words, these are not in standard form. If I rewrote this in standard form, it would be 2x plus 5 and x plus 1. Okay? So my, my horizontal asymptote, my a over c, is 2 over 1. And that's just um, y equals 2. All right, so that's my horizontal asymptote. All right, I'm going to go ahead and graph that as well. All right, there's my vertical asymptote. Oh, uh, no, I already had that. I meant to say, there's my horizontal asymptote. Okay, now, um, now what? The intercepts. For the x-intercepts, we set the numerator equal to 0. Okay, so if I set the numerator equal to 0, let me just clean this up. All right, so this is me finding the x-intercept. So I will go 5x. No, <laughs> it's not 5x. What I meant to say was 5 plus 2x equals 0. All right, this is how I will get the x-intercept. So subtracting 5 from both sides gives me 2x equals negative 5. Dividing both sides by 2 and I get x equals negative 5 over 2. Now negative 5 over 2, you understand, hold on, all right, negative 5 over 2 is just negative 2.5, don't you know? All right, so um, that's going to be my x-intercept. So I can go ahead and graph that. So on the x-axis, obviously, negative 2.5 would be right here. So there's my x-intercept. Okay, so that's negative 5 over 2 comma 0. Now the y-intercept, the y-intercept is what you get if you let x equal 0. So I'm just going to plug in 0 for x. If I do that, hold on trying to clean this up. All right, I guess I'll just use the eraser. All right, if I plug in 0 for x, that's going to give me the y-intercept. So that would make, um, if I put in 0 for x right here, okay, then that's going to wipe out this term. If I put in 0 for x right here, then this is gone. So I just have 5 over 1, which is just 5. All right, so that is going to be my y-intercept. Is going to be at 5 on the y-axis. In, in other words, 0, comma 5. Okay. Um, let me just clean that up before I forget. All right, now we're ready to plot a bunch of points. All right. So I want at least two values on the left and at least two values on the right. So on the left, I'm going to use um, negative 3 and negative 2. Okay, so I'll do negative 3 and negative 2. On the right, well, I already have 0, um, but I'll use 1. Okay, uh, and why not, why not use 2 as well, 1 and 2. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to type this into my TI-30. Let's see, 5 plus 2x. Over um, 1 plus x. Okay, um, where did I say we were going to start? We we're going to start at negative 3. So negative 3. All right, at negative 3, I'm at 1 half. 
All right, same as 0.5. Uh, then at negative 2, I'm at negative 1. Okay, at 0, I'm at 5. I already had that. At um, 1, let's see, let's turn this into a decimal. Highlight it, toggle it, 3.5. And what about 2? At 2, I'm at 3. All right, so let's plot these points. So at, uh, at negative 3, I'm at 1 half. So negative 3, I'm halfway up. At negative 2, I'm at negative 1. OK, so that's enough for me to draw this graph pretty well. Okay, now um, at 1 I was at 3.5, so 1 and then 3.5, 3 and a half. And at 2 I'm at 3, so 2 comma 3 would be right there. Okay, so this graph is going to look something like this. And there you go. Your graph should look very much like that. Symmetry, neither. It's close to being odd symmetry, but um, the center of rotation is not the origin. So once again, neither. All right, so that's it for number four. Uh, and this video is long enough, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here. Um, we will pick up on the next video with problem number six. See you on the next video.